everyone. We're going to go over solubility rules in this video, and there's really only two, two rules. The first rule is about what soluble compounds contain. They contain group 1A cations, the ammonium ion, the nitrate anion, halides, but there's an exception for halides. When your halide is combined with one of these cations, mercury 1, silver, or lead 2, then the salt would be insoluble. And then finally, all sulfates are soluble except when combined with, again, mercury 1, silver, lead 2, plus calcium, strontium, and barium. If you see sulfate combined with any of these cations, it would be insoluble. Rule two tells us what insoluble compounds contain, phosphate, carbonate, and sulfide. So if you see a compound and it contains any of these anions, it's insoluble except when combined with a group 1A cation or ammonium, and there's one more rule for insoluble compounds, and that's hydroxide. All hydroxides are insoluble except, again, when combined with group 1A or ammonium and these three cations. So if you see a hydroxide and it has one of these as a cation, it would be soluble. So let's get some practice applying these rules. And I've listed the rules here just in case we need to refer to them. So our first compound is calcium phosphate. We have a rule for phosphates. All phosphates are insoluble except when combined with group 1A or ammonium. We are not combined with 1A or ammonium, so this would be insoluble. What about the next one, Mangan manganese 2-hydroxide? Well, all hydroxides are insoluble except when combined with 1A, ammonium, calcium, strontium, and barium. Well, we're not combined with it. This would be insoluble. How about this next one? Potassium sulfide. Well, we've got a rule for sulfides. They're insoluble, except when combined with group 1A, this would be soluble, and it would also be a strong electrolyte. That means in solution, potassium sulfide dissociates 100% to form two potassium ions and one sulfide anion. And how about this one? Magnesium chloride, where all halides are soluble, except when combined with mercury 1, silver, or lead 2, and we're not combined with any of, the, any of those, so magnesium chloride would be soluble. Again, you can also think of it as a strong electrolyte, meaning that in water, meaning that in water, magnesium chloride dissociates 100% into magnesium ions, and in this case, two chloride anions. Let's try some more. Calcium carbonates. All carbonates are insoluble except when combined with group 1A or ammonium. Well, we're not combined with group 1A or ammonium, so this is insoluble. How about the next one? Zinc sulfates. All sulfates are soluble except when combined with these cation cations, which were not, so this would be soluble and therefore a strong 
electrolyte, again, meaning that in water, zinc sulfate dissociates 100% into zinc ions and sulfate anions. How about the next one? Mercury to nitrate. Well, all nitrates are soluble, no exceptions. This is soluble and a strong electrolyte, meaning again that in water, mercury to nitrate dissociates 100% into mercury two ions, and in this case, two nitrate anions. How about this last one, calcium sulfate? Well, we have a rule for sulfates. All sulfates are soluble except when combined with one of these exceptions, which we are. So calcium sulfate would be insoluble. Let's try a few more. Lead to bromide. All halides are soluble except when combined with one of these cations, and we have an exception. So this would be insoluble. How about this one? Ammonium perchlorate. Well, all ammoniums are soluble. So this would be soluble and therefore a strong electrolyte. So in solution, ammonium perchlorate in water dissociates 100% into an ammonium ion and a perchlorate anion. How about this next one? Barium hydroxide. All hydroxides are insoluble, but we've got some exceptions, and the one that we have is barium. So this would be soluble and a strong electrolyte, and it's also a strong base. But as a strong electrolyte, barium hydroxide dissociates 100% into a barium ion, a cation, I should say, and two hydroxide anions. What about sodium fluoride? Well, all group 1A cations are soluble, and that's what we have here. So this would be soluble and a strong electrolyte meaning that in water, sodium fluoride really exists as the dissociated sodium cation and a fluoride anion. And then finally, aluminum phosphate. All phosphates are insoluble except when combined with a group 1A or ammonium. We don't have that. So this is insoluble. So those are all the examples I have of using solubility rules. Hope that helped and hope you practice more on your own. Thanks for listening.